Okay, in the last video we talked about just the context of how we work with addiction in what we call the new model of recovery, which, which is based in unconditional love and inquiry. Here are the Killaby inquiries. And if you'll remember in the last video, I talked about how we don't focus on behavior. We focus mainly, mainly on the drivers, the emotional drivers that drive people to addictive substance or behaviors. Because we, we, we know that when we heal the pain that drives people to those things, their relationship to those things changes, right? There's more choice. It's easier to say no. The body will start to even re reject certain addictions because as you get clear emotionally in the body through this work, your body just changes and you can start to trust your body much more. And your body often will give you a somatic no after you've done this work. So instead of trying to tell yourself not to use something, the body will start, will start to sort of respond and say, hmm, I don't want that anymore. When you start doing that somatic work. So that's the real key, the somatic work, which involves dealing with the drivers, right? Because trauma as a driver, shame as a driver, deficiency stories, this is all pain held in the body. It's not just the stories, it's the Velcro effect, right? Okay, so I'm going to help you work on those drivers, but I want to start giving you an inquiry that does focus somewhat on behavior just to reduce the preoccupation that surrounds an addiction. Science tells us that preoccupation is a hallmark of what's called third stage addiction, which is the sort of the, the strongest stage of addiction. What is preoccupation? It just means we become preoccupied both with using an addictive substance or activity, but also at some point with not using it, like trying to quit it, trying to manage it. And so at that point, our minds are very preoccupied with the substance or activity. It rules our lives. And it's very hard then to quit when there's that much preoccupation, when your whole day is sort of centered around, I want it, but I shouldn't have it. Craving and aversion. All of that amps up preoccupation and makes addiction itself amp up. So here we're gonna do an inquiry today just around the preoccupation. So with preoccupation, there's two sides of it again. It's that I want the cookies that I'm addicted to, but I shouldn't have the cookies. Okay, so you can apply this to any addiction. I'll just use the example of cookies. It could be around anything, cocaine, heroin, alcohol, porn, sex, love, whatever one's addicted to. Or it feels a compulsion towards. I like the word compulsion or a repetitive compulsion than I do addiction because addiction is such a clinical term and carries so much weight. I'll use the word, but... We can also talk about just us, it, it being about a compulsivity around certain behaviors and substances. So how do we work with that, the preoccupation around that? One is to go, just to use reverse inquiry, right? And, all, and any of the other tools that I've outlined for you in this Keo series, I'll show you how these tools get, we work on that, use these tools to work on the preoccupation, right? So. If I'm sitting here in inquiry, I might say, as a reverse inquiry, because remember my belief is I want the cookies. So I reverse that and I say, I don't want or need cookies right now. And then the system goes, yes you do. <laughs> and it might show me a picture of the cookies or a picture of me eating the cookies or some words that say, oh, that would be so nice right now. or I gotta have that. So now I can see the words and pictures that have come up as a result of the reverse inquiry. And I can just rest now and watch those words and pictures. What tools I use depend on what's happening here. So I'm not actually experiencing these thoughts right now. I don't have a cookie addiction. I'm just taking you through it like a simulation. Well, let's say if I see a few words or I hear a few words and then I see some pictures all pulling me towards the cookies.
But as I rest with them, my relationship to these thoughts begins to change. The more I rest and allow them and just see them in my awareness with the space around them, I might see that they start to fall away one by one. And I let that happen. I just watch and watch them slowly dissipate and leave my awareness as I watch. But let's say a few of those thoughts get kind of sticky and they're just right there feeling very compelling. I could just enter in simple inquiry right there. I've got some sticky thoughts there. Resting with them just keeps me glued to them or identified with them. So I just shift my focus from those thoughts that are sticky around this to just noticing the sound and the sensation of the tapping which provides more space with those thoughts. Here I'm just focusing on the sound and sensation of the tapping. This is simple inquiry. And I keep noticing that until I really don't see the thoughts as much anymore, or they're very distant in the background, or the, you know, far off in the distant in my consciousness. And so when I get more space with those thoughts, I just drop the tapping and I bring my attention into my body. And I find out where in my body do I feel this urge or this energy around wanting or needing cookies. And then let's say, again, going back to the somatic tools that I've shown you, maybe there's this sensation in my chest. And I come in and I, I ask first, is there a form or a shape to that, right? Because that's when we can use metaphysical hands. Um, but let's say this time I don't feel a form or a shape. I just feel a sensation that doesn't have borders to it. So that's hard to use the metaphysical hands with that, so I don't do that. And instead, I, from behind the back, I imagine awareness, like that fog creeping in through a city, I imagine that awareness coming into and feeling that sensation very gent gently and lovingly and just resting with it. And maybe even doing the dance with it as my attention is inside that sensation. I just let my attention just move with the sensation. If it's moving or changing. If it stays stuck, I let my attention just stay there with it stuck. Offering no resistance to the sensation. Even if there is resistance, I just welcome and feel and dance with that with my attention. And maybe what happens is that tension or that sensation starts to diminish or starts to disperse some. I let that happen. Just staying with it. Just curious to see what happens with the sensation, right? Like maybe the sensation expands a little bit but gets stuck. Or maybe it dissolves. If it dissolves, then I let it dissolve. If it gets stuck, then I know there's something to work with there in the body. I know that that sensation is probably going to be Velcro to other thoughts around wanting this substance or activity here. Cookies. <coughs> After I've rested with it a while, if it remains stuck, I can do a number of things. One thing is that I could use some mining right there. Remember I talked about mining as a somatic tool. So I might just ask it a question like, to the sensation, what is it that you want? And then I listen from awareness and I just watch to see what comes up in my thoughts and maybe it says, I want comfort. I want to feel the comfort of the cookies. Okay, so then I've got some words out there now. It's a new set of words. Those words were Velcro to that sensation, so I mount, mind those words out and I hear them or maybe even spell them out visually and just watch them for a second from awareness. Not analyzing, not commenting, just observing from a still quiet awareness, that thought. Maybe I'm hearing the thought. Here I've got it visualized out and I'm just watching it. Just let it be there. Without an agenda about what's going to happen to the thought, just resting with it. And let's just say, for example, the thought mostly falls away, but then it gets kind of stuck, like it just doesn't want to let go. 
you know. And so I could just let it be stuck, but the problem is if I come back down in my body, I might pull that thought and re-Velcro the thought into the feeling, right? Because as long as that thought's hanging out there, it's believed on a certain level. So maybe I just, instead of doing tapping this time, I just do some tracking with focus shifting because the thought's really sticky. And that's what I'll do. So I just pick up my fingers and I watch my fingers move in different directions, being present just to my fingers. Remember, this is focus shifting, excuse me, tracking plus focus shifting. So as I just watch my fingers for a second, then I come and look at a surface like the floor. I just present to the floor without thoughts for a moment. Just resting there, being aware of being aware, noticing the colors and the shapes. And then I come back to my fingers. Again, we usually do about three rounds with this particular tool. Just moving in different directions like this. And remember that I can close one eye. I don't know if you can see one eye closed here. And I can just put one finger here. Do a little bit of tracking like that. Maybe move to the other eye. I should say, and watching the tracking there with that one eye. And then I just pull back and I look at another surface, maybe just look at the ceiling, looking at the contours of the ceiling, not commenting on any of it, just looking at those contours, those shapes, those colors, being present to that for a moment. Again, shifting focus in that way, and then shifting focus back again for the third time to my fingers. Maybe moving them back and forth this time. Not my head, just my eyeballs watching. Different, you can even do circular patterns. And then letting that come to rest and picking another surface. Maybe now I'm looking at the surface of the screen in front of me. Not thinking, just present to the screen. So now I've unhooked now from that thought that was there that was sticky. And that gives me more space. I can come down into the whatever sensation that I'm feeling. And since I've mined out that thought, maybe the sensation now is different, it's lighter. And as the sensation is lighter in the body, there's less of a sense of compulsion towards the cookies right there. And maybe this time I just rest with it a little bit longer in the body, the sensation, just resting and allowing it. I could say thank you, thank you phrase. If I wanted, there's lots of choices. I could say, Thank you for arising to this sensation. I love you. You're welcome to stay. Let's say this time it starts to move and change and disperse. And the energy gets released. I don't feel that sensation there anymore. Right? And I can just come back and once I feel sort of clear on the somatic level, I can just rest there for a moment, just being present to what it is allowing everything to come and go, taking a short moment of rest, but then coming back to the inquiry, right? And saying, I don't need or want cookies. And maybe this time it just feels neutral, like, yeah, I don't really need or want cookies right now. And maybe it takes more rounds of that inquiry to get to that neutrality around wanting the cookies. So I want to be very thorough working on that side of the coin, right? The craving side. Keep using that reverse inquiry to conjure up stuff and let that stuff fall away and then coming into the body. You may have to do that several times, right? But in this case, let's say that it's fallen away now. I don't feel like I need or want it right now. And so I move to the other side of the coin, right? The other side of preoccupation. And I say this, I don't need to refrain from eating cookies. Now, why would I do that? Because wouldn't I want to just work on the craving side of it? No, because preoccupation is not just about craving the cookies. It's this internal war, war where you also believe you shouldn't have the cookies. It's like that forbidden fruit thing. The more I tell myself I shouldn't have it, the more that I want it, right? Tell me I can't have something makes me want it more. So I have to flip to that side of the inquiry and say, I don't have to refrain from eating cookies. Because this new model recovery is not about rules, it's about clarity. 
It's not about stopping myself from eating cookies. I want to inquire into this desire to stop eating cookies so that that preoccupation can quiet. So I say, I don't need to refrain from eating cookies. And then uh, what comes up is, this, yes, you do. You're going to get fat. Um, you're going to feel shame. You're going to beat yourself up. You don't need them. Other people will judge you if you start eating cookies again. So whatever comes up, right, words and pictures. And now I can rest with this. Again, starting with just the tier one tool of resting and seeing. Maybe there's a collage in front of me of these words and pictures. Maybe it's a series of words and pictures, right? I have choices here. Maybe it's a series of words and pictures that are happening very fast and I can't slow them down. So remember, we did a version of the clearing method that can help with the slowing down of that, right? Maybe my mind just keeps saying, you can't do it, you shouldn't do it, it's bad for you. Mom's going to judge you, you're going to look fat, here's a picture of you fat, here, you see that? Mind racing, right? You can just observe that and witness that, but you have to be careful because you can get, you can get so hooked into the movie of those images and words that you get really identified with it and you're not really moving deeply in inquiry. So what you could do is just sort of pull up one image at a time and do this this clearing method that I showed you early, earlier where you drag and drop, right? So just start tapping on the forehead and take one image in that series and just pull it into the tapping zone. And then as soon as you get to the tapping zone, shift to the sound and sensation of the tapping for a bit where you find that space between thoughts. Just rest there for a moment, 10, 20 seconds. And then slow down and pull up the next phrase of set of words or images in that series of stuff that came up and drag one thing again at, in, at a time into the tapping zone, switch to the tapping again, right? Notice the sound and sensation of tapping. See what you're doing is you're finding the space between these thoughts through witnessing because you're still seeing these things. That's, it's important to see them from awareness, but it's also important to find that space between these thoughts. So I'll move to the next words that say, oh, you're gonna be fat. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that in there and then start noticing the tapping, sound and sensation. So I'm just gonna move through that, each one of the thoughts in that series until I find more space with that. And sometimes it will all just fall away. And that gives me an opportunity to then go into my body right because often we find these these energies in the body are really what's driving a lot of it so let's say this time as i come into my body i feel something in my stomach like that self-will that says you shouldn't eat cookies but i've now let go of the thoughts so i have more space to come into the stomach right and then let's say the stomach has a tightly wound ball in it again well, I can use the metaphysical hands, right? I can bring those imaginary hands to that ball in the stomach and just let the hands dance with that ball. Just letting it do whatever it wants as I rest here for quite a while. And again, often there can be movement with that sensation and sometimes it'll begin to fall away or diminish or whatever, but if it stays stuck in some way, that tells me I can start doing some mining, right? Because just being with it doesn't allow it the space to move. But if I do some mining, I might find out there's some story still connected to that sensation. So I might ask, what does this sensation mean about me? And it might say, oh, you're a pathetic addict or something like that. It's gonna be different for you, what gets mined out. But let's say you're a pathetic addict. And so though there's this identity that comes up, I'm a pathetic addict because I keep wanting cookies, right? So I wanna look at that thought. See that that's not me, it's just a thought. Resting with it, or whatever thought comes up, just resting with it. 
maybe this time I don't need to do any tapping because as I rest with it, just let it be there, it slowly starts to fade away on its own, falling away into presence. And then I come back down into the body again. And I dance with or allow whatever sensation is there. I keep going through that process. Working with the flip side of the coin. Just I don't need to refrain from cookies. I keep coming back to that inquiry over and over until that feels neutral. So then at that point, the desire for the cookies in this moment is neutral. But also that preoccupation with trying to not eat cookies is neutral. And then it's more like I have a choice, right? Because with compulsion, we, off, we don't often have a choice. But when you deal with both sides of that preoccupation, your mind quiets around it, your body feels clearer, and it feels like you have a choice. Therefore, it's easier to say no to the cookies. But at the same time, even if you eat the cookies, you don't have as much stuff around it at that point. You don't have to make it that big of a deal. You have to beat yourself up. The point is, is, that, is that the compulsive desire or drive towards the cookies has relaxed because you've dealt with both sides of the preoccupation, right? And having that choice is what we really want. We want freedom around these things. We don't want to be enslaved to or compulsive about these things because that's where the damage is in our lives, right? In the next video, I'll talk about not focusing so much on behavior like we just did. We do a little bit of that in this work, the behavior of reaching for or wanting cookies or trying not to eat cookies. In the next video, I'll talk about working with the underlying emotional, psychological drivers, spiritual drivers that drive us to the addictions and how to work with those. Stay tuned.